The NASCAR Xfinity Series race has officially concluded from Atlanta Motor Speedway, and what looked like was going to be a win for Collier Austin Hill turns into a win for John Hunter Nemechek. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to the video. I just got done watching NASCAR Xfinity Series race from Atlanta Motor Speedway, the 250 mile race. We have quite a bit to talk about from this race. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So, before the green flag drop in today's race, arguably the two fastest cars in the first round of qualifying, that being Shelton and Creed and Austin Hill, would have to go to the rear of the field, along with Parker Redslaff, Gray Van Ols, and Mason Massey, who had unapproved adjustments on their car. So, at the start of the race, he had Chandler Smith lead the field from the outside with John Ernie on the inside, and Chandler Smith got a really, really strong run, was able to lead for the first lap, but eventually Josh Berry got a really, really strong run a few laps later and was able to pass Chandler Smith for the lead as we saw some really good racing behind. But Josh Berry would dominate the early portion of this race, and he actually tried to get the lead in lap 26, trying to get by Josh Berry, but eventually would not get a chance and drop to fifth. The first caution race came out of lap 28 for Parker Klergerman, who spun with the flat left rear tire. Luckily, he was able to save and dig any damage on the car, just basically lost to go into turn number two and brought out the first caution. We saw a little bit of strategy under the caution where guys like Ty Gibbs, Cole Custer, Sam Mayer, Sheldon Creed, Anthony Alfredo, Jeff Hart, Sammy Smith would all come down pit road while the rest leaders decided to stay out. Meanwhile, Ty Gibbs would get a penalty for an uncontrolled tire. Down the race story, had Josh Berry lead the field from the outside with John Hernemachek on the inside, and Josh Berry got a really, really strong restart and was able to clear for the race lead. As we're coming to the white flag, Josh Berry had the race lead over Riley Herbs and Chandler Smith as well. As they're going to turn number four, Chandler Smith tried to make a really, really strong run, but Riley Herbs also got a huge run coming off of turn number four and was able to get around Josh Berry and coming off the final corner, Riley Herbs would steal CH1 and win Stage 1 at Atlanta Motor Speedway over Josh Berry. Then we saw the cars that down pit under the first caution come down pit road. Guys like Riley Herbst, Josh Berry, Chandler Smith, Justin Haley, Austin Hill, Justin Allgaier, Jeremy Clements, and all, and Joe Graff Jr. would come down pit road while the rest leader stayed out. Meaning that Sheldon Creed would lead the field from the outside with Cole Custer on the inside with Sheldon Creed being able to clear it for the race lead. Then a lap 51, a caution would come out for Parker Retzlaff, basically nearly spinning. I don't understand why that was a caution. Parker Retzlaff say that. I honestly think that should not have been a caution. I guess NASCAR was trigger happy there. I understand you don't want a big wreck, but he completely saved it. And NASCAR, I think, was a little trigger happy there, but Parker Retzlaff saved it, and we continued on. Then on the next restart, Ryan Sieg lead the field of the green from the outside with Sheldon Creed on the inside. And Sheldon Creed got a really strong restart and was able to clear for the race lead. But Ryan Sieg also got a run and was able to get the lead back. Meanwhile, in last 63, trouble strike for Daytona winner of the ARCA race, Greg Van Alst, who basically wrecked into the outside wall, crashed hard, and collected Mason Massey. Bringing the caution out. Really tough break for Gray Van Ellis, who really kind of struggled this weekend. That car was just absolutely terrible this weekend for him. Of course, trying to make his NASCAR Xfinity Series debut. Struggled and crashed out of the race. Then all the cars would come down pro. Guys like Chandler Smith, Justin Haley, Brian Riley Hurts, Sam Mayer, John Rimacek, Jeb Burn would all come down pit road while everyone else stayed out. So then on the race, sorry, had Ryan C. lead the field from the outside with Sheldon Creed on the inside. And we saw Sheldon Creed get a really strong run on Ryan C. and was able to pass for the lead. Then we saw Kyle Weatherman. He had some issues. He got into the outside wall after contact from Ty Giz, but was able to continue going. But it would not matter at the end. Austin Hill tried to catch Sheldon Creed near the end of the race, but it would not happen. And coming out the final corner, Sheldon Creed would hold off Austin Hill to win stage number two. Then we saw some cars basically come down pit road. Most of the leaders came down pit road. Justin Allgaard, Jeremy Clemens, as he had to come back down pit road for missing her box. And Sheldon Creed also had to come back down pit road because he didn't feel. But Joe Graff Jr. actually would stay out and assume control of this race. So on the race story, Joe Graff Jr. would lead the field from the outside with Justin Haley on the inside. And Justin Haley got a really strong race throw and was able to clear for the lead. Meanwhile, on the lap, Ty gets basically ready to end. He had a flat right rear tire and basically went up the track. Then on the next lap, the big one was strike when Riley Kurtz had a loose, basically had a left rear tire that went unfortunately down and unfortunately slew it and no one had anywhere to go and everyone basically checked up. And unfortunately, guys like Sam Mayer, Blaine Perkins, Sean Creed, Brennan Poole, Brandon Jones, Kyle Weatherman, Ryan Seek, Andy Fredo, and Josh Williams were all involved and collected in the big accident and the big wreck. Unfortunately, just no one really had anything they could do in that situation. Took out the two cars actually want to save this wallet, being Riley Herbst and Sheldon Creed, who had two of the fastest cars in the field. Really unfortunate situation, but sometimes you can't avoid those situations, but that would bring the caution out. And then we see a little bit of strategy where guys like Mason Massey, Josh Berry, Sam Mayer, Garrison Smithley, Josh Wiggy would come down pit road while the rest later stayed out. 
So then on the race, Terry had just Haley leave the field from the outside with Dan teammates Daniel Hamrick and Chandler Smith lining up right behind him, meaning all three call cars will be line to line together. That meaning John Hernemacek would go to, from fourth to the inside. Then we had trouble once again on lap 101 after Haley had a good restart. And unfortunately, Kyle Weatherman brought the caution out after getting the outside wall with a ton of damage. Of course, I think involved one of the wrecks earlier in the race, bringing out the caution, unfortunately ending his night. Then we went back racing on lap 109, actually the second last restart of the race with Justin Haley leading the field from the outside with teammates Daniel Hamburg and Channel Smith right behind him. Then you had John Hernie Macek restart in second position. But Justin Haley got a really, really strong restart and was able to clear for the race lead. Then we basically saw Austin O really start making some moves. Austin O really no one was working him for whatever reason. I was a little surprised no one wanted to work with him, but I know he's a really good super speed racer. But he tried to make some moves and tried to get the race lead, but unfortunately dropped all the way back to four. So at this point, he was going to have to figure out, because he was the one I was watching, because he was going to have to figure out, can he make it and make it by the three call cars? Because three call cars were going to be really, really tough to beat. Well, he tried to make a move and tried to make a move to the inside with about four or five laps to go in the race. But unfortunately, he didn't get an opportunity in a shot lap. Traffic came into play and he fell back quite a bit. As they're coming, I think, the two laps to go in this race, Austin Hill's chance of winning went out the window due to Park Klugerman getting into him going into turn number three. But actually, something interesting is basically Park Klugerman never touched him. Just the air got on Austin Hill's car. Hill had gotten loose as well. And unfortunately, Austin Hill's chances of winning the race went up in flames. It's a shame no one wanted to work with him. And unfortunately, he spun out because of that. So then we went to the final restart of this race with Justin Hilly leading the field from the outside with the number 28, John Harry Machek on the inside, and Dan Hermick was in third position as well. But went back racing once again on the final restart, and unfortunately, a bunch of drivers started running out of gas, including Chandler Smith, meaning that John Harry Machek would inherit the race sleep. At this point, John Hunter had the lead ahead of guys like Daniel Hamrick and Justin Haley, and they tried to figure out a way to get to him, but unfortunately, the teamwork went out the window. As it came to the white flag, John Hunter had the race lead. Dan Hammer tried to close near the end, but it would not be enough. And coming off the final corner, after having handling problems and handling issues, John, John Harry Machek comes out the final corner and picks up his third victory of the 2023 season and his first Xfinity Series win at Atlanta Motor Speedway. A fantastic day for John Henry Machek. Obviously, did not have the fastest car. He was complaining of handling issues on the radio, but he capitalized near the end of the race, was in the right position at the right time. If all three call cars would have gone on the outside, I think they beat John Hunter at the end of the day, but he stayed in the right position at the right time and picks up his third victory of 2023. Huge congratulations to John Hunter on winning the race. So now we'll talk about the race results, and I'll give you my score of the race, and we're going to talk about the race itself. So John Rimacek picks up the victory. Daniel Hemrick finished the second. A great night for Daniel Hemrick. Obviously, teamwork went out the window that cost him a shot at the victory near the end. But a very solid top five run. Going to really help him in the point position with nine races up till the playoffs for Xfinity. A great night for Daniel Hemrick in second. Cole Custer finishes third. Cole ran top ten all night long. Never had the pace to win, but still a very solid top five night for Cole Custer. Justin Haley finishes fourth. I think Haley had probably the fastest car near the end of this race, or one of the strongest cars in this race. He was one of the favorites coming into it. Haley had a very, very good night for sure. Probably could would have. He definitely would have likely won the race if Austin wasn't there near the end. But still a great night nonetheless for Justin Haley fourth. But Knight probably should have won in. Sam Mayer finishes fifth. A great top five run for Sam Mayer. Sam Mayer's had up and down run this year in 2023, but good to see Sam Mayer finish in the top five. Ty Gibbs finishes sixth. Great night for Ty Gibbs in the top ten. Obviously, every time he gets in that 19 car, his goal is to win. He never had the car to win, but a solid night in top ten. Great run in sixth place. Kyle C gets a very solid top ten run in seventh place. Good to see Kyle C running really well. Good. I know he kind of struggled throughout the race, but he stayed on the lead, lead lap and had the track position and gets a very solid seventh place finish. Parker Klugerman finishes eighth. I know people are going to be mad at him for getting into Austin Hill, but again, he never touched him. Parker's car was really, really good, especially on the long run. It was moving through the field. Another very solid top 10, 10 day, nonetheless, so for Parker. I think he's going to need to win a race to make the playoffs, but he's really, really close for nine points. I think he's like three or four points below the cutoff line currently at the moment. So a great nine, nonetheless, for Parker Klugerman. Josh Williams finishes nine. Remember, the last time we were here, he parked it on the front stretch and got a one-race suspension. This time, he got involved in a wreck, but bounces back, and I think it's his first top 10 
of the 2023 season. Great night for Josh Williams in ninth place. And Sammy Smith finishes 10th. Sammy Smith never really was a factor or a contender. Qualified very, very well. But the car was more set up for qualifying than the race. Seemed like because he struggled. But he does get a top 10 finish. Brad Moffat finished 11th. Saw a run for him. I think he had a top 5 or 6 car a lot of this evening. Unfortunately for him, just never had a chance on a shot to contend. But still a very solid night for him in 11th. Austin Hill finishes 12th. Austin Hill, I think he had the fastest car in this race. Just like the last couple of times we've been in Atlanta and also the last couple of Super Speed races. Unfortunately, when you're so dominant in Super Speed race, no one's going to want to work with you. And it's a shame because if a lot of these teams work with Austin Hill, they might have had a chance to maybe beat Austin Hill himself as well. But everyone was afraid to work with him. But Austin Hill probably had the strongest car. Then he got turned, cost him a shot, but he does end up finishing in 12th. Jen Byrne finishes 13th, saw a run for him in 13th place. Kaz Grawl finishes 14th. Decent run for him. Jeremy Clements finishes 15th. Parker Reslap finished 16th. He was running top 10 quite a bit of the evening. I think he ran out of gas near the end of the race as well. That's a shame because he had a car that could have gotten a top 5 or a top 10. Justin Allgaier finished 17th. I think he also ran out of gas near the end of the race as well. Ran around 6th to 7th a lot of the evening. Josh Wiggy finishes 18th. Josh Berry finishes 19th after going a lap down. Chandler Smith finished 20th. He ran out of gas on the second to last lap of the race. He was one of the fastest cars in this race as well, but runs out of gas. Joe Graff Jr. finished 21st. Davis Sarr finished 22nd. 23rd place finisher Jeffrey Erhard. 24th for Mason Massey. 25th for Ryan Ellis. 26th for Garrett Smithley. 27th place finisher Parker Chase. 28th place finisher Brennan Poole. 29th place finisher for Akin Urugata. And finishing 30th is Mason Maggio. 31st place finish for Kyle Weatherman. 32nd for Blaine Perkins. 33rd for Brandon Jones, who crashed out. Anthony Alfredo finishes 34th. Sheldon Cree finishes 35th. Riley Hurts finishes 36th. Ryan Seek finished 37th. And Greg Van Oss finishes last in 38th place. So now, let's talk about the overall race as a whole, and I'll give you my score of today's race. I'm going to be honest. This race was good at times, but also was kind of boring at times. Grant, I think a lot of the drivers setting up the runs. I feel like the first 20, 25 laps were not that great, but I thought stage two was very, very good. But I thought that run to that caution coming out until the end, I thought was a little bit frustrating. I feel like drivers could have done something. And when you have Kalk, who is as strong as they are, when you have them all together, it's really going to be tough to beat him. It feels like the days for Austin Hill started dominating super spear races. So for me, and I thought the finish actually was pretty good as well, my score of tonight's Xfinity Series race is going to be overall a 7.5 out of 10. Like I said, I feel like the race could have been a little bit better in my opinion. I feel like, actually, I'll give this race an 8 out of 10. Uh, eight, eight and a half out of ten, actually. Um, there was good points for sure in this race. It was better than the truck race today for sure. I'll give it an eight and a half out of ten. So that is good for tonight's NASCAR Xfinity Series race view from Atlanta. I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and the channel notifications on us if I win a video that does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Let's go and with that and comment with your thoughts well on today's race. Where it's on thoughts on today's race at Atlanta, let me know below. Let me know your score in the comments below. And congratulate John Hernemachek on picking up the victory. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Tomorrow on the channel, there's going to be two videos on the channel. We'll have the SRX driver lineup for 2023 out in the early morning. And then depending on the weather, which weather has been improving on a, basically an hour-by-hour -hour basis, we should have the NASCAR Cup Series of Race View out tomorrow night. If not, and the weather postpones it, we'll have that race review on Monday evening as well. And that could change the schedule. But, of course, we'll be, reviewing, we'll be previewing New Hampshire Motor Speedway. I'll give you an update on some of the future of this channel as well this week. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's race review, and I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.